hello friends kishan is here again so in this video tutorial i'll continue my previous uh, video that was created for spring with jdbc so as i said you in previous video tutorial here i mean database credential i have hard coded right even database credential as well as uh, uh, driver class name so these things i am going to move into the properties file so let's do that so i go to the src folder right click over here and create a file I give the file name as data base dot properties so you can choose the file name as per your choice but extension would be the always properties click on the finish so here i am going to move the all this hard coded properties value from bins.xml to this properties file so i would give the db uh, on driver class name so now db url db username that is the root db db stands for database password and that is the root only now database url we may copy from here so cut over here and this is the database url now we need to use this key this is the key and this is the corresponding value which is separated with the equal sign so we may use this key in this configuration file and here we will have to write the dollar sign like this curly bracket open and close within this you will have to specify the key name similarly again here dollar curly bracket open close and dollar curly bracket open close and same thing we will have to specify here and this value we can fetch from this property file using its key now database url then db username and we have a db password So now, now we'll have to make use of one of the bean class which is provided by the Spring framework. So of course we have created the properties file that will now we'll have to tell the Spring framework this I mean where is your uh, this properties file? Uh, to do that you need to specify one of the bean class provided by the spring framework and that bean class is called you can press ctrl shift t to search any class into jar file so that class file that class is called property placeholder configurer property placeholder configurer so this is the class we would like to configure over here so click in on this arrow shine expand this one and copy this guy so copy qualified name and here we may configure and this bean has one property name is called locations and this location is a type of list so list we can configure using list tag right so list and inside the list we have a value tag and value inside the value you may specify your properties name which is present in the src directory so this is your property name so you can directly specify inside the list you may have more than one properties so again you can you can list all those properties inside this list tag so control a to select all control shift f for formatting so that's it that's it you have to do 
now go to the client program and let's let's run this api right fetch all employee information and check whatever modification we have we have done that is correct so of course we are able to fetch the data from the database and this api is running perfectly fine so whatever modification we have done that's correct so this way now i'm going to close all files and let me explain this project source code so basically guys let me show you the flow of application so uh, how this fetch all uh, employees info gets called so from here basically uh, first of all in source source i mean client program we have we are asking for this bin which is called a uh, employee service impl from a spring framework which is configured inside the this configuration file so this is the bin we have configured whose id is this so you can ask from a spring framework for this bin by using this id so now once you use this i mean id and you specify the class name then you get the reference of this bin right and this bin class implements this interface so definitely in left left side you can assign this object to i mean uh, i mean the interface which is implemented by this class so now we have a reference of service interface right so in this service interface these are the api so you can make call to this api right right so once you call make to get all employees info then basically call will be delegated to our service class right here you may have choice to do some kind of business validations right uh, we may make the call from client program to directly dog classes but in real project usually we do not like do like this so first from client program or uh, in real scenario if you have a web based application then instead of client client program you may have a something is called controller so we have a mbc like architecture we have a presentation layer from where you make a call to the controller and controller makes the call to the your service layer here you can do some business logic validations you can do some data massage massaging and once you do the business logic validations then if you find all data is valid uh, like uh, uh, I mean uh, then you can make call to the next uh, uh, I layer that is nothing but the doll layer right so call will the call will go to doll layer and from goal layer, doll layer responsibility of doll layer is to interact with the uh, underlying persistence layer or database so from here you call to the query to the database and uh, this will of course return the list of employee to the service layer right and service layer will return to the client and in web based application that would be a controller and controller will finally send to the send the data to the presentation layer so this would be the flow now i would like to discuss on some api in a DAW layer so which we have coded earlier so here so basically i would like to discuss on the this api uh, we are uh, get employee by id so here basically uh, uh, when you fetch some data from the database and uh, this api is basically responsible to fetch a uh, single row from the database and in this case your api is returning custom object so if your api is return single or collection of custom object then whatever api you are using from jdbc template that api uh, always demands for this object that is nothing but the employee row mapper uh, like uh, even here you are selecting the single record but uh, in next api we are selecting in information about the all employees still you need to pass this row mapper and this row mapper is implementing row mapper interface right here we have used generics and this row mapper has a 
uh, one callback method which is going to call every time for uh, all uh, records which is available on the your result set so th this this callback method will be called by the spring framework as a developer you don't need to think about them only you need to override this method and you need to extract the result from the result set and uh, populate uh, i mean your model class object with its properties which you are ex extracting results from the result set now in double layer here here we have uh, uh, in beginning of this class we have declared data source and jdbc template and we have declared the i mean setter method of data source and configuration file we have in this uh, while configuring this DAW class we have given property name equal to data source and data source we have injected here so uh, while looking into the this DAW class this is not good idea to I mean injecting data source in every DAW classes and instantiating instantiation of JDBC template we have done ourselves we have used new operator but uh, uh, when you talk about the spring uh, dependency injection then if spring dependency injection does not allow you to create an object using new uh, 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 new operator right so this object creation should be moved into the configuration uh, file and uh, that is the that will be the taken care by the spring container so in next example i'm going to customize this class so basically i'm going to move data source as well as uh, jdbc template will configure uh, data sources already we have configured in the bins.xml even though jdbc template i'm going to configure uh, into xml file and uh, we won't have this kind of setter method of data so directly uh, we can make the use of we'll declare only jdbc template and we'll have a setter method of jdbc template and we can safely inject jdbc template in uh, any dog classes because jdbc template is a thread shape class in the spring framework so uh, just bear with me in next uh, series of tutorial where we'll do some kind of customization in DAW layer so that's all i wanted to convey in this video tutorial guys so see you in the next video tutorial till that happy learning